This is a short video to introduce you to your HP financial calculator and help you get it set up to start time value money calculations. You might notice that this calculator is a little beat up and a little bit different looking. It's probably 10 years old and the new models are called the HP 10B2. All they've done is add a couple of additional features which we won't be using and change the design a little bit. Also, you don't have quite as many scratches on the new calculator. However, everything that I show you on this financial calculator, you should be able to follow along if you have the 10B2. First thing that I want to do, we'll go ahead and turn it on, is look at what we call the five key approach. Across one of the rows on your calculator, you should see the five keys here. The first one, N stands for number of periods. I slash YR is our interest rate on an annual basis, sometimes called a discount rate or rate of return. Next up we have PV for present value. PMT, our payment, which we'll use when dealing with annuities. And then FV, our future value. In addition to the five key approach, we'll also deal with something called a cash flow worksheet. When dealing with the cash flow worksheet, we'll use the cash flow CFJ button, the N sub J button, which is a shift function of the CFJ, and then we'll calculate either the net present value or the internal rate of return per year. The NPV is just the present value of an uneven cash flow stream and the internal rate of return per year is the rate of return of our uneven cash flow stream. These are used extensively in capital budgeting, which we'll do in chapter nine. In addition, we'll talk about NPV calculations when we do stock valuation in chapter seven. Once you're familiar with the basic keys, and we'll go through some example problems on a later video, the next important thing is to have your, make sure your calculator is set up correctly. When these calculators are originally purchased, they come with some default settings. The first you may notice is that it displays two decimal places. The idea is that most financial calculators are used for calculating dollars and cents, so two decimal places is a standard setting. However, you may need to calculate more precise values in dealing with percentages or maybe in a math class or statistics class. In order to get your calculator to display more than two decimal places, you'll use the display function. The HP calculator can display up to nine decimal places. To change that, just do shift. And when we use the shift in this class, the new HP 10B2 should have two shifts. One is kind of a yellowish orangish color. The other one is purplish. All of our shift functions are based on the yellow. So we do shift, D-I-S-P, and then however many decimals you want to display. Again, the maximum setting is nine. You can set it to four or five, two, whatever you're comfortable with. However, if you set it to two, make sure that if you need more decimal places, you can change it out to display more than the two decimal places. Otherwise, it'll just round everything off to two decimal places. The second thing that we want to look at is the periods per year. Most calculators are set to 12 periods per year. The reasoning being most mortgage payments or auto payments are done on a monthly basis. While we're going to do some of these calculations on a monthly basis, sometimes we're also going to use weekly or quarterly or semi-annual compounding, we want to start out with annual compounding, one period per year. So we need to set our calculator to one period per year. To currently see what your calculator is set for, do shift, clear all. You can see this calculator is set for 12 periods per year. I want to change that to one period per year. So I want to press one, shift, P slash Y, R. Be careful not to press the times P slash YR over here, but the P slash YR for periods per year. Now the calculator is set for one period per year. Now be careful with that setting. 
whenever you change it it's going to stay there until you change it back so if you're doing homework or a quiz or exam and you change your periods per year remember to change it back once you're done if you ever want to see what your calculator is set for again just shift press and hold the clear all and it'll show you what your calculator is currently set for the last setting that we want to play with is the begin end in the older calculator like the one I have here one design flaw was they put the shift and the begin end very close together in a corner and a lot of times people would accidentally change these in their backpack bounce around and the buttons would hit or they'd be pulling out their calculator and then accidentally press them both the new model designed to split these keys up a little bit but the process of changing back and forth is just pressing the shift and then pressing the begin end. Notice once I've done that it now says begin at the bottom. When I press it again that begin disappears. The begin end function has to do with annuities. Sometimes with annuities we want payments at the end of each period. That's our typical setting. That's referred to as ordinary annuity. An ordinary annuity has payments at the end of each period. However, sometimes we'll want to deal with payments at the beginning of each period. If you want beginning of each period, that's referred to as an annuity due. And again, to set that up, just do shift, begin end, and you'll see that begin on the bottom of your screen. If you ever see that begin there and you're not specifically doing an annuity problem, most of the time we will not be doing annuity, pro annuity due problems. So you will not want to see begin. If you see that there and it's not supposed to be, again, just toggle it back off, shift, begin, end, and it will disappear. You should now be familiar with your financial calculator and have it set to proceed. The next video will work with a couple of five key time value of money problems.